Greetings all. Today we're going to be looking at this guitar. This is an Ibanez S561. Retails for 400 bucks, new for 2021. And uh, this is a lot of guitar for the money here. I'm very pleasantly surprised. Um, long story short, I've been looking for a good HSS configured guitar for years now. Problem is, I hate tremolos, and the ones that do not have tremolos, I just didn't jive with, or they play like shit, or both. Um, got my hands on this. I didn't really see any YouTube videos at all of this, which is odd. Not even Hanning made a video of it. Um, it's not in stock really anywhere, and then walked into a local shop, and there it was. Tried it out, bought it on the spot. Um, now, first off, this is not completely stock, so let me get that out of the way. Um, I didn't change anything because I had to. I just did it because I can, and I wanted to make it my own. So, yeah, I'm going to deck it the hell out. But first off, this is just a uh, hip shot saddles right here have their o-ring knobs uh, graph tech ratio locking tuners and then your Schaller s locks right there so that's what i've changed on it so far the electronics are totally stock um, let's go ahead and go over the aesthetics obviously you have your seafoam green which is sexy as hell um, this although it's a rosewood fretboard it looks ebony you would not be able to tell unless you felt of it or unless you looked at the specs obviously but this just looks great um, I mean, just look at it. And uh, now the Ibanez logo on the headstock, of course the headstock's matching. The logo is ever so slightly jagged, but being that this is a really bright neon color, you're gonna have that on an Indonesian guitar. It's just gonna happen. But uh, it's not a big deal, it's barely noticeable. You have some bird's eye action going on on the neck there. Pretty cool, right? And the next little feature that's pretty nice is uh, they actually push the string fell right here on the low E a little further back so you get a little bit better tension on the low E. That's a good and a bad thing. Good thing because you get more tension. Bad thing because if you want to change this bridge plate to like, in my case, I want to put a hip shot on it, you're going to have to widen this hole right here for the string fell to go through uh, for it to line up. So just keep that in mind. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the build quality. So first, because I did say that this is not completely stock, I'm going to show you um, what it came with originally. So for the volume and tone knobs, you just have your typical little knurled metal knob. They're good. They're rock solid. No issues whatsoever. No set screw, but they uh, they hold in pretty tight because of the way this works in here. Um, and then for your saddle blocks, run-of-the-mill hardtail saddle blocks here. Um, the only real criticism I have to give these, though, is uh, these set screws are a little bit too tall. So especially if you have low action, mine's at one and a half mil at the 12th fret, uh, these screws will poke you. So if you don't plan on changing any parts, I would at least recommend getting a little bit shorter um, set screws for your bridge saddles. And then last but not least, these are the stock tuners, just your typical basic tuners, um, non-locking. But these are actually very stable. They didn't have any kind of slippage or anything. I didn't really have a single problem with them. I mainly just wanted to change tuners because I can and uh, I like locking tuners I'm spoiled like that but yeah nothing wrong with these now for the positives of the build quality well first of all it's a pretty substantial feeling guitar even though it's an S series has that real thin body it feels like it's pretty much rock solid like it's gonna last you for a long time um, the frets are nice the uh, electronics that they come with are pretty good I don't plan on changing the switch at all it's very solid I don't really see there being an issue with this I am going to change these pots. Right now they're fine. They got good resistance and everything, but I could tell this one's getting ever so slightly scratchy. So CTS pots are going to eventually be right there. Um, now, one thing I always check right off the bat with any import guitar is the fret work. Um, for whatever reason, I would say in the last three to five years, any import guitar that I've come across, whether it's $100 or $1,500, they always tend to have either cheese grater frets corroded frets or both and it's very annoying but this is not the case with this guitar As you can see totally smooth i did not file a single thing um the frets did need a little bit of a polishing but not not too much so where i had to overhaul it or anything i just took a 12,000 grit micro mesh and went over the frets a couple times that's it and then uh just to drive the point home about how these frets are dressed here's a microfiber pad i'm going to just run it across it's not catching. Very nice, right? So yeah, nothing to complain about here with this neck or the fret, the, uh, the fret work. Um, 
now the neck itself, the way they finished it, it kind of reminds me of, say, like a, um, you know, it's a satin finish. kind of reminds me of, like, a Mexican Strat or an American Strat. Very smooth feeling. Um, this is a Wizard 3 neck, of course, and it feels ever so slightly more chunky than, say, the High Performance S model, which I actually prefer, even though I got smaller hands. I like just a little bit to grip onto. Still pretty thin. It's an obvious as what you expect, but, um, yeah, nothing really to complain here, and it's, uh, even though it is a wizard neck, the uh, contour of it is actually more of like a very thin D shape. Not really a, it's not totally flat right here. It's kind of got a D shape going on, which I like a lot. All right, now as for the negatives, there are a few things. However, they're mostly non-issues, and the ones that are issues are a very easy fix anyway. First of all, one thing that kind of irks me is these uh, pickups, these single coils. The uh, middle and neck here, I don't know if you can see that, but the uh, D-string magnet is a little too high up, and that's causing me to get some warble and intonation issues if I play past the uh, 12th fret here. Uh, mostly on the wound strings. The plain strings are totally fine. It's just that D-string mainly and this A-string kind of has that too if you pick pretty hard. As you can see, it's a little too high. I'm going to get a luthier to actually lower those two magnets because I actually really like these pickups, these uh, single coils. They sound great. So those are not being changed. Next up, this part where you place the uh, guitar cable in, where this jack is, this wood here where they carved it, it's very thin. Like I'm, I'm afraid that if you bump this thing on accident, you might chip this away eventually. Or like if you yank the cable out a little too hard, it's uh, very thin. I'll actually show you a close-up shot, but just for the camera here. And it's also just a tiny, tiny bit rough right there. It's not a huge deal. I mean, it's just a jack, but I don't know. I'm, I'm a little worried about that being just a little too thin. I wish they would have made just this right here a little bit thicker. One thing I wanted to... Uh, mention is these string ferrules here for whatever reason when I first got this guitar and I strung it a few times um, I had like sawdust coming out of these holes um, it was like little bits of wood not necessarily sawdust I mean little tiny little bits of wood too which it's kind of weird you could see it kind of left some residue on my mat here but uh, that eventually stopped so just take it for what it's worth I just wanted to mention it because it was there. All right, so the next and final inconsistency here has to do with the uh, the finish on the side of the neck here. I'm not sure if they just didn't sand it down all the way or if there's some little bit of lacquer left off or extra lacquer. It's hard to tell. I'm no luthier. I'm just telling you what I see. But um, first thing that's most obvious thing is this little rough spot right here on the maple. It's just a tiny bit rough. doesn't really affect playability. I don't notice it when I'm actually playing. Um, it's just something to point out. And if I were to take a pick and show you, you can actually hear it. It's not the smoothest. Like if I were to just lightly run that across. See there. And uh, the same deal with a couple little spots on the actual rosewood here. You can kind of see it a little better out there. Again, it's barely noticeable. I just wanted to point it out. And then right here, I can't tell, like on the 12th fret, I can't tell if that's a hump in the rosewood or if that's an extra bit of lacquer, but there's a tiny, tiny little bump right there. It looks like it's just lacquer. You could probably just send that off. But uh, these little tiny, tiny little inconsistencies, you're going to get that on a guitar in this price point. And these are very easy fixes. Just take some really fine grit sandpaper and go over it a little. So here's a tuning stability test. I've got 10 to 46 strings. I'm tuned to E flat. Uh, one and a half mil of the 12th fret for action, and this is a plastic nut. So here's your open chord. Alright, now here's some stupid shit. Pretty good. So these are their uh, cheap Ibanez quantum pickups, and believe it or not, I prefer these over the ones that are in the high performance line so in the high performance you have a tone zone and two true velvets honestly i think this bridge pickup and these single coils sound better than those um the the uh, tone zone in comparison to this sounds a little too woofy and muddy and this is just right it's very bright very cutting um and these two they sound more strat like to me which i prefer they're much more throaty and um, they cut through the mix better so I think these are nicer pickups than the DiMarzios that the more expensive ones come in. 
So first, I want to show you different amps, different settings. I'm not going to go by any particular formula, but I'll put on screen what amp is what. <laughs>
have it. I hope my playing was bearable, and should you get this guitar if you're looking into it? Yes, this thing covers a lot of ground, especially with this pickup combination. It's extremely stable. I've owned about 40 guitars in my life, give or take, and this is some of the most fun I've had with a guitar in quite a while, and it barely weighs anything, which doesn't hurt either. Also, it's a great blank canvas to do whatever you want with it. I'd be perfectly happy with it as is. You don't really have to do anything to it, but since this will be my new main guitar, I'm going to be decking it out as much as possible. You saw what I already put on it. Um, in addition, I'm going to be putting a DiMarzio Dominion in the bridge position. I'm going to change out this stock Ibanez plate to a hip shot one, assuming that my tech can deal with that ferrule issue. I'm going to give it a Graph Tech Tusk Nut, and uh, yeah, it's about, oh yeah, CTS pots, of course, and then a fret leveling if it needs one. So yeah, this is going to be a total badass, even more than it already is. So I hope you enjoyed the review. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or anything. And uh, until next time, horns up.